We stand at a crossroads, a point in time where the echoes of the past reverberate in the present, demanding a reckoning with the enduring legacy of racial injustice in America. To understand this struggle, we turn to the words of Dr. Cornell West, a towering intellect whose voice has for decades challenged, provoked, and inspired us to confront the raw, uncomfortable truths about race in this nation. Dr. West reminds us that the fight for racial justice isn't merely about righting past wrongs, though that in itself is a monumental task. It's about more than apologies, more than symbolic gestures. It demands a fundamental shift in our understanding of power, privilege, and the very fabric of American society. It's about confronting the systemic and institutional structures that perpetuate inequality. Think about it. What are the invisible barriers, the insidious mechanisms that continue to hold back generation after generation? Dr. West challenges us to see beyond individual acts of prejudice, though those are undeniably harmful, and delve into the very DNA of a nation built on a racial hierarchy. It's about recognizing how the tendrils of history, of slavery, of segregation, of Jim Crow, continue to strangle the hopes and aspirations of millions. They aren't just events of the past. They are ghosts that haunt our present, shaping the realities of black lives today. We see it in the disparities in education, healthcare, housing, and employment. We see it in the mass incarceration system, the school to prison pipeline, and the economic disparities that continue to plague communities of color. These are not isolated incidents, Doc West argues, but rather the bitter fruit of a system designed to disadvantage and disenfranchise. Think about the prison industrial complex, a term Dr. West uses frequently to expose the raw underbelly of our justice system. He argues passionately that this isn't simply a matter of individual choices, of people straying from the straight and narrow. It's a system, he argues, that is morally bankrupt. A system that preys on the vulnerable, on the marginalized, disproportionately impacting communities of color. Imagine for a moment, a society where prisons are less about rehabilitation and more about profit, where corporations have a vested interest in locking people up, where policies are driven not by public safety, but by a desire to control and subjugate certain populations. This, Dr. West warns, is the reality we face. We see it in mandatory minimum sentences, in the over-policing of black and brown neighborhoods, and in the criminalization of poverty itself. It's a system, Dr. West argues, that dehumanizes and demonizes, that perpetuates a cycle of poverty and despair. He asks us to consider, what happens when a society becomes comfortable with caging its own citizens, particularly when those citizens are disproportionately black and brown? What does it say about our values, about our humanity? These are not just rhetorical questions, but a call to action, a demand for accountability, for a radical reimagining of justice itself. And then there's the issue of wealth, a word that often masks the deep chasm that separates white and black America. West doesn't mince words. He points to the stark numbers. The median wealth of a white family in America is nearly 10 times that of a black family. Let that sink in for a moment. 10 times. This gap, Dr. West passionately argues, isn't some accident of history. It's not about a lack of hard work or ingenuity on the part of black Americans. In fact, he points to countless examples of black excellence, of resilience and creativity in the face of unimaginable obstacles. This gap, he argues, is the direct consequence of centuries of discriminatory policies, policies that have systematically disadvantaged people of color, blocked their access to opportunity, and robbed them of their rightful inheritance. We see it in the legacy of redlining, where black families were denied mortgages and access to prime lending. We see it in the history of discriminatory hiring practices, in the underfunding of schools in black communities and in the lack of access to capital and resources to build generational wealth. The gap, Dr. West reminds us, isn't just about money. 
It's about power. About access. About the very ability to thrive in a society that was built to privilege some while holding others back. Dr. West, with his profound understanding of interconnectedness, urges us to see the bigger picture. He challenges us to resist the temptation to view these issues, mass incarceration, poverty, inadequate health care, failing education systems in marginalized communities as isolated incidents. He wants us to understand that these are not merely unfortunate occurrences, but rather symptoms of a deep-seated disease. He pushes us to acknowledge the uncomfortable truth. These are symptoms of a society built on a foundation of racial hierarchy, a society where some lives are valued more than others. Think about it. Imagine a child born into a neighborhood where the schools are underfunded, prec where opportunities are scarce and where the threat of violence is ever present. Imagine that same child, their potential stifled, not by a lack of talent or ambition, but by a system rigged against them from the start. Dr. West reminds us that this isn't about individual blame, it's about recognizing the systemic forces at play. The invisible structures that perpetuate these cycles of inequality, he implores us to ask ourselves, what does it mean to live in a society where a child's zip code can be a greater determinant of their future than their intelligence or their drive? This, he argues, is the true face of racial injustice. But don't mistake Dr. West's searing analysis for defeatism. His message, though unflinching in its honesty, is not one of despair. It's not a lament, but a call to arms, a clarion call for a more just and equitable world. He offers, instead of resignation, a path forward, a way to heal the wounds of the past and build a brighter future. He calls it radical love. Yes, you heard that right. Love. But this isn't the sentimental love of greeting cards and romantic comedies. <laughs> this is a love that is fierce, uncompromising, and deeply rooted in justice. It's a love that recognizes the inherent dignity and worth of every individual, regardless of the color of their skin, their background, or their circumstances. It's a love that refuses to be silent in the face of oppression, that demands accountability, and that fights tirelessly for the liberation of all people. It's a love that is both deeply personal and powerfully political, a force capable of transforming individuals, communities, and entire societies. Dr. West doesn't just preach radical love, he embodies it. He challenges us to move beyond what he calls the cheap grace of superficial reconciliation. He calls out the emptiness of colorblindness, a philosophy, he argues, ignores the lived realities of racism and perpetuates a dangerous illusion of equality. He asks us to do something far more difficult, far more transformative. He asks us to embrace radical empathy. He invites us, no, he dares us, to step outside the confines of our own experiences, our own limited perspectives. He challenges us to see the world through the eyes of those who have been marginalized, oppressed, and dehumanized. Imagine for a moment, truly imagine, what it's like to walk in the shoes of a black mother, fearful for her children's safety every time they leave the house. Imagine the weight of history, the burden of prejudice, that rests on the shoulders of a young black man navigating a world designed to suspect and criminalize him. This is what Dr. West is asking of us, not just to acknowledge the pain of others, but to feel it to internalize it, to let it transform our understanding of the world. It's a call for profound introspection, for a willingness to confront our own biases and complicity in systems of oppression. It's a call to move beyond sympathy, beyond charity, towards a deeper understanding and a more profound solidarity. Importantly, Dr. West's analysis of racial justice in America extends beyond the black-white binary. He understands and emphasizes the struggles faced by other marginalized groups, broadening our understanding of the complex tapestry of oppression. He compels us to look at the plight of Latinx communities, 
grappling with issues of immigration, economic inequality, and cultural erasure. He directs our attention to the ongoing injustices faced by indigenous populations, whose land was stolen, whose cultures were decimated, and who continue to fight for recognition and sovereignty. He shines a light on the discrimination experienced by religious minorities, facing prejudice and exclusion in a nation that often struggles to live up to its ideals of religious freedom. He doesn't allow us to forget the struggles of the LGBTQ community, fighting for equality, acceptance, and the freedom to live authentically. Dr. West, through his scholarship and activism, underscores the intersectionality of oppression. He illuminates the painful truth that systems of power and privilege operate on multiple levels, intertwining and overlapping in ways that often compound the burdens faced by marginalized groups. And here, Dr. West presents a crucial challenge to our understanding of justice itself. He argues that true justice is not a zero-sum game. It's not about pitting one group against another, or about achieving equality for some at the expense of others. He reminds us that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. He insists that our destinies are intertwined, that the liberation of one group is inextricably linked to the liberation of all. This, he argues, requires a fundamental shift in our thinking. It demands that we move beyond narrow self-interest and embrace a broader vision of collective liberation. He compels us to recognize that dismantling systems of oppression benefits us all, that a more just and equitable society is a stronger and more prosperous society for everyone. When one group is held back by prejudice and discrimination, the entire nation suffers. We lose out on the talents, the creativity, the full potential of a significant portion of our population. Dr. West's own intellectual journey his profound understanding of the black experience in America is deeply rooted in the legacy of those who came before him. He stands on the shoulders of giants, drawing inspiration and wisdom from the long tradition of black intellectuals and activists who have dedicated their lives to the fight for freedom and justice. He invokes the spirit of Frederick Douglass, the escaped slave turned abolitionist, whose words still resonate with the fire of resistance. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, and it never will. He channels the brilliance of W. E. B. Du Bois, whose groundbreaking work exposed the systemic nature of racism and laid the intellectual groundwork for the civil rights movement. He carries the mantle of Martin Luther King, Jr., whose dream of a just and equitable society continues to inspire generations of activists. Dr. West reminds us that the fight for racial justice is not a sprint, but a marathon. It's a relay race where each generation carries the baton forward, building on the sacrifices and achievements of those who came before. But inheriting this legacy, Dr. West argues, is not enough. It's not enough to simply admire the courage and brilliance of past generations. We must engage with their ideas wrestle with their complexities, and allow their wisdom to inform our own understanding of the world. Dr. West issues a challenge, a call to action for every individual, regardless of their background. He urges us to become students of history, to delve into the often untold stories of struggle and resilience. Read, he implores us. Read the works of black authors, of activists, of poets and playwrights and historians. Immerse yourselves in the narratives of those who have experienced racism firsthand. Listen to their stories, their pain, their hopes, their dreams. Let their experiences challenge your assumptions, broaden your perspectives, and ignite within you a passion for justice. This, Dr. West argues, is not just about acquiring knowledge, but about cultivating empathy about developing a deeper understanding of the human condition. Now, some might dismiss Dr. West as just another talking head, an academic with radical ideas, but little real-world impact. 
but that would be a profound mischaracterization of the man and his mission. Dr. Fath, West doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk. He has consistently put his body on the line, his freedom at risk, in the service of justice. He has been arrested numerous times for his activism, from protesting police brutality in the streets of New York City to standing in solidarity with striking workers on the picket lines. Picture this, a renowned professor, a Harvard intellectual, willingly getting handcuffed, facing jail time to amplify the voices of the marginalized and demand justice for the oppressed. He doesn't shy away from discomfort, from confrontation. He embraces it, knowing that true change rarely comes without sacrifice. His courage in the face of power, his unwavering commitment to justice, serves as a powerful reminder to us all. It shatters the illusion that activism is the exclusive domain of the young, the radical, the disenfranchised. Dr. West shows us that it's not about our age, our background, or our social position. It's about our willingness to stand up for what we believe in, to raise our voices against injustice, to use whatever platforms we have, however small, to create a more just and equitable world. He reminds us that silence is complicity, that neutrality in the face of oppression only serves the oppressor. Each of us, in our own way, has a role to play in dismantling systems of oppression. We can no longer afford to be bystanders in the fight for justice. It's time to step up, to speak out, to demand change. But Dr. West also reminds us that we don't fight for justice alone. He emphasizes the importance of coalition building, of recognizing that our struggles, though unique in their manifestations, are interconnected and mutually reinforcing. He calls on us to reject the politics of division, the forces that seek to pit us against one another based on race, class, gender, or any other arbitrary marker of identity. He reminds us that our true strength lies in our unity, in our ability to recognize our shared humanity and work together towards a common goal. He envisions a movement that transcends traditional boundaries, a movement that brings together people from all walks of life, united by a common commitment to justice, equality, and love. He calls for black and brown solidarity, for a recognition that the fight against racism is inextricably linked to the fight against all forms of oppression. He urges white Americans to acknowledge their privilege, to confront the ways in which they benefit from systemic racism, and to use their voices and their positions of power to dismantle it. This call for unity, for coalition building, is not about papering over our differences or pretending that they don't exist. Dr. West understands, perhaps better than most, the complexities of identity politics, the ways in which power operates on multiple levels. He acknowledges the importance of black spaces, of women's spaces, of spaces where marginalized groups can come together to heal, to organize, to celebrate their cultures, and to strategize for liberation. But he also recognizes that true liberation requires more than just creating separate spaces. It demands a transformation of the dominant culture, a dismantling of the systems of power that perpetuate inequality. And that, he argues, requires finding common ground, building bridges of understanding, and working together to create a more just and equitable world for all. Now, Dr. West's message is not always comfortable. He's not afraid to ruffle feathers, to challenge the status quo, even when it means alienating potential allies. He doesn't shy away from criticizing those in power, regardless of their political affiliation. He calls out hypocrisy and inaction wherever he sees it, on both sides of the political aisle. Democrats, he argues, too often rely on the rhetoric of progress while failing to enact meaningful change. He criticizes their tendency to prioritize incrementalism over bold action, their willingness to compromise on principles in the name of political expediency. On the other hand, 
He accuses of embracing policies that actively harm marginalized communities, from mass incarceration to voter suppression to the dismantling of social safety nets. He sees through their appeals to colorblindness, recognizing them as a thinly veiled attempt to maintain a system of racial hierarchy and privilege. Dr. West's critiques, however, are not driven by partisanship. He's not interested in scoring political points or aligning himself with any particular ideology. His allegiance is to truth, to justice, to the pursuit of a more humane and equitable society. He challenges us, regardless of our political persuasions, to move beyond the narrow confines of partisan politics. He implores us to embrace a higher moral ground, one rooted in a deep commitment to justice, love, and compassion. He calls for a politics of conscience, a politics that transcends the allure of power and the seductions of ideology. He reminds us that true progress requires more than just changing laws. It demands a transformation of hearts and minds, a fundamental shift in the way we see ourselves and our relationship to one another. Now some might listen to Dr. West's fiery rhetoric, his unwavering indictment of injustice, and feel a sense of despair. They might look at the seemingly intractable problems of racism, poverty, and violence in our society and wonder if real change is even possible. But Dr. West, despite his sobering assessments, remains a beacon of hope. His words, though often tinged with righteous anger, are ultimately fueled by an unshakable belief in the human capacity for goodness, for redemption, for transformation. He reminds us that the fight for justice is not a fairy tale with a guaranteed happy ending. It's a struggle, a long and winding road, filled with setbacks and disappointments. But it's a struggle worth fighting, a journey worth taking, because the alternative, apathy, resignation, despair, is simply unacceptable. And this is where Dr. West's message transcends the realm of politics and social commentary and taps into something deeper, something more profound. He connects with the core of our humanity, with our innate yearning for a better world. He reminds us that hope is not a passive emotion, not a naive belief that things will magically work themselves out. Hope is a verb, a choice we make every single day to believe in the possibility of a better future and to dedicate ourselves to making that future a reality. It's about refusing to give in to cynicism or despair, even when the odds seem insurmountable. It's about finding the courage to keep fighting, even when it's hard, even when it's painful, because we know that our collective liberation depends on it. Dr. West often invokes the words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who famously said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. It's a powerful image, one that speaks to the long and arduous journey towards a more just and equitable world. But Dr. West also reminds us that this bending, this progress, doesn't happen on its own. It requires constant effort, unwavering commitment, and a willingness to fight for what is right, even when the path ahead seems uncertain. He challenges us to become part of that arc, to lend our voices, our hearts, our actions to the ongoing struggle for justice. He reminds us that history is not a spectator sport, that we are all active participants in shaping the world around us. So, as we reflect on the legacy of Dr. Cornell West, let us not simply admire his brilliance from afar. Let us not just marvel at his eloquence or his unwavering commitment to justice. Let his life and his work be a call to action, a challenge to examine our own lives and our own complicity in systems of oppression. Let us find the courage to speak truth to power, to stand up for what is right, and to fight for a world where the color of one's skin doesn't determine their life chances. Let us never forget that the fight for racial justice is not a destination, but a journey. 
It's a journey that requires constant vigilance, unwavering commitment, and a willingness to embrace the complexities and challenges along the way. But most importantly, let us never lose sight of the humanity that binds us all, the belief that a better world is possible, and the unwavering hope that guides us towards that brighter future.